Oh, hi there. Oh, so good to come out of that building. So good to be with you today. Um, we've been uh, doing a lot of thinking as uh, we consider and look back to our capital expansion uh, presentation to our society and um, what we've been doing since then, because we weren't ready then. And uh, now today, we're in a much better position to say to you, hey, we're ready. So what have we done in the last two, three years? Uh, lots of different things, but I'll highlight a couple. One being the financial statements. You can see in the, the presentation here that over the last three years, we've been uh, achieving excess revenue over expenses of about a million or more uh, per year. This puts us into a position where we get to go to a bank and go, get, go to actual donors and say, you know what? We believe that we're managing this and not just managing it, but managing it well. And um, we know that in our talks with uh, different uh, loaning agencies, that uh, they are in agreement that uh, we're in a strong position to be able to borrow. Not to say that that's how we want to fund the whole project. Um, we do know that we want to do some fundraising, um, probably about a third. And then the difference would be um, both with bank loans as well as um, other investment opportunities and then excess of revenue over expenses. Um, so we're actually quite confident. We're very excited because um, we're in a way better position now than we were three years ago. And uh, we're confident that we'll be able to proceed with some exciting uh, changes for this purpose of, hey, let's see God glorified here at Langley Christian School. Since 2019, we've been working on and developing and executing on a strategic plan that takes into account all of the challenges and opportunities that face us. A huge part of that is our three-phase campus-wide development plan. We're asking everyone to consider today how they can support phase one, the building of an addition at the elementary school to replace the fort. Phase two, the building of a new middle school campus may come, but not until this project goes off the ground. Supporting phase one is an urgent need for LCS. You know, when I first came into this campus, it really just struck me how we have a staff here and we have a staff over there. Um, we were setting up mentors for new staff and you, know, you have one over here and one in this building and it's just so hard for them to connect. There's a staff room over there, there's a staff room here. And we have an amazing group of people in yeah. this school, but the structure sets up for disconnect. And I really, really look forward to being able to come together as a full staff together. Especially as a school that values community, I think it's really hard for us to create full community at the elementary with two different buildings. And I think we really want to, um, we want to celebrate each other, we want to learn from each other, and this the, the separate spaces just makes that really awkward. But then there's, there's also the, uh, the practical, practical. things. <laughs> you know, this is the other thing that startled me, well startled, is the other thing that I discovered when I came into this building as, the Ford, like it's ugly, right? There's there's leaky bits, the carpet's wrecked, the, the stuff is old. These teachers though, man, guys, we have great teachers. Mm -hmm. They have spent so much time and energy to make this a beautiful space for your kids. But they're constantly dealing with things like the air conditioning doesn't work or the heat isn't working and they're making all sorts of adjustments all the time because they desire making a great space for your kids. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if they have a beautiful space, putting that energy into your kids then? They already are magnificent where they are. Yeah. I think it's just going to become such a much better learning experience for our kids when they're in a beautiful space and the teacher isn't spending time on heating and cooling and mm -hmm. broken carpets and things like that. We're also looking at outdoor learning spaces, things that are just going to invite kids into engaging with their environment and the, the world around them and the trees mm -hmm. and the grass and the fields and the air and just having meaningful learning in our outdoor space. Yeah, and even simple, simple things like having a covered area for PE because there's a lot of strain on our gym facilities. So just being able to teach us to take their classes outside in a covered space since we live in beautiful BC where it occasionally rains, it's great to have that kind of opportunity to be outside and yet not always get wet. Um, teaching in the fort has definitely some of its perks and some of its challenges. One of the perks that I love about teaching in the fort is the door to the outside. Um, however, it also creates those challenges where it does get colder in the room more often. As you can see, I'm kind of wearing my coat still. Um, so temperature regulation has been a little bit of a tricky thing um, to deal with, especially with kids learning. Another thing that the fort possesses is one of the challenges is um, it does leak a little bit. So there's been a couple things. I'm not sure if you could see in the background there, there's a little poster that has gotten 
wrecked from the leak. Yeah, or just noise levels. I think I'm really excited for the new, the new building just because the grounds are gonna be carpeted. And so when the students are in the classroom, it's easier for everyone to focus, it's easier for everyone to be heard because even the slightest whisper does get carried around in the classroom a little bit as well. Scheduling has also been another thing that we have to work around. Um, it takes an extra five minutes to take my students from my classroom all the way to the main building for music and PE and ADST and library. So that's four um, main subjects that the kids have to go to throughout the week. It takes us five minutes to get there, five minutes to get back. So that's at least 40 minutes if we only went to each of those ones. Being able to be all together as a community with all of the teachers that I'm supporting, all of the learners that I'm supporting in one place would really make it a lot easier for everyone to do their job more effectively. Right now, I have the pleasure of working in both buildings, which means I get to work with the grade twos and the grade threes, but it also means running back and forth all day, every day, um, in the rain, in the snow, in the sunshine, which is a nice sunny break in the day, but, um, it means it takes away from the time that I get to connect with teachers when teachers have questions or um, takes up some of my time where I could be running reading groups a little bit longer. So being all together in one building would be a wonderful way to just create more community between the classes that have been placed out here and the classes that are in the main building. I was really excited about the outdoor classrooms that have been placed in the learning plans and just more opportunities for learning to be extended outside. Um, being a learning sport teacher, I know full well how much our kids need to move and how much they need the fresh air and they need the natural light um, to feel more um, fulfilled and energized in what they're doing. Um, so many of our kids have such a hard time sitting in their, their desks all day. So to be able to extend our learning outside in the beauty of God's creation um, is such an exciting part of the new design and the extended grounds outside. Well, this is my first year here and it was definitely a surprise to be in the fort. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting, um, but I went with it with a positive mindset and there is some pros and there is some cons. Pros being that it's nice to be so close to our outdoor spaces. Um, there is a little community in the fort, but with that being said, there's a con with that, how I do feel there is a separate community from the larger school. Um, so not only as a staff member do I feel that, but I think the kids feel that too. We feel separate from the rest of the school. Um, different events kind of happen over there as opposed to here. Um, we always have to be traveling from one place to another. Um, so it just is longer transitions for the kids too, to go into the main building for things like chapel or music or PE. So less learning time. I've been on the board for almost six years, just about the same time as we uh, moved into the fort. And I have four children, three of which, well, two of which have spent grade two and grade four in the fort. And one who is currently in grade two at the moment in this class actually and I have done lots of volunteering I've even like got down on my hands and knees and helped clean the fort at the end of the school year so I would say yeah I've spent a lot of time in the fort and um, initially you know it was supposed to be a short-term fix I think it served the purpose of that and it's definitely time to replace the fort it's uh it's at the time where there's lots of repairs that need doing it was never meant to be a permanent structure. And I think to be fair to staff and to students, you know, it'd be nice for all staff to be under one roof again and all students to be under one roof again too for community. I think one of the things that uh, excites uh, me and uh, my family about uh, the Fort Replacement is um, it's gonna be a great uh, facility to attract uh, new teachers, um, new families as well. As you can see, when you have a new uh, facility, uh, just it's just a better learning environment for kids, uh, better teaching environment for uh, teachers, um, better area for staff to work at. It's exciting for me to know that uh, LCS is committed um, to teachers, committed to the kids, and uh, it just shows us the long-term commitment uh, that they have for the community too, to make this kind of investment uh, in our kids and in our community.
So currently our preschool has an outdoor space, which is what we're in now, and it's this beautiful space, but it is quite far from the school. And I find the transition of getting children from our school building to our outdoor classroom is quite a large transition. It takes a lot of time. Um, currently our children, we all have a bathroom routine. We eat our snack inside because we can wash our hands well there. And then we trek across the field to outdoor. Uh, with the new build, we're super excited because we can seamlessly go in and out. We'll be connected to our outdoor area, so bathrooms will be closed. We'll be able to spend less time in transition and more time outside, which is what we're super excited about. As we were approaching taking on the project of replacing uh, the fort, we had four key goals or items we, we needed to consider and keep, keep in mind. One was cost. So we wanted to make sure that we got a building that was good for today's needs as well as into the future, but keeping in mind value for money. We wanted it to be good value for money. The second is impact on our existing programming. We realized that building this building would take at least a year to build and we'd have to run school at the same time. So we wanted to make sure whatever decisions we made would have as manageable impact on our school and operations as we could. The third one, is our functionality or the flexibility of the space. We want to design to meet today's needs, but we also need the flexibility to be able to change the needs as the school changes and as education changes over, over the years to come. And the last one is the use of space. We wanted to make sure the footprint that we took up was the best we could take up for the facility, keeping in mind the other three goals that we wanted to make the best use of the limited land that we have. Also included in, in this project is finding a new home for our central office. Our central office team is currently located in the fort and with the removal of the building, they would need a new home. We will be re relocating the existing preschool from where they currently are to into the new addition and creating their space such that it would allow for a seamless indoor outdoor experience for that program. Our, so the, their existing area would be reconfigured to allow the use for existing uh, central office as well as flexibility for the school for future, future needs. Additionally, one of the concerns we were aware of is we know we have some challenges with accessibility, drop-off, and parking. One of the unique parts of the property is we have an area called the pan, we call the panhandle. It's on the west side of the property and it leads to 228. It's actually wide enough to put in two lanes as well as parking. The fort replacement is going to require us to remove the existing playground. The existing playground is in great shape and can be relocated and it will also relocate it to make that space a little better used, less congested on daily, daily use. We also want to add additional playground spaces, additional play spaces, outdoor learning spaces for the students to give a wide variety of experiences. It's not going to be possible to keep the existing track that we have, but as part of that, we've created a, a network of trails and, and circuit around the school to allow for things like the Terry Fox Run, Mutton Kilometer Club, and track and field practices and training. What I really like about this process has been the professionalism of it involved. There's two, two of the committee members are industry members where industry um, professionals when it comes to construction. And with that, we have the leadership team, uh, which has obviously some construction development experience and obviously the admin side of the school. And what we've done is we've done it professionally. We've, we've selected consultants and the construction manager the same way that we would do in our own business, which, uh, which is, why well, like if we're going to be part of a committee, we want to do it the right way. And I think this has been done quite professionally. And I think the results will show because of it. I think uh, one of the problems of the fort, other than the fact that it's, um, it's a temporary structure, it's old, it's falling apart, and it's, it sort of alienates the teachers and students into a separate building. I think one of the big problems is that the fort takes up the yard. That space should be used properly for outdoor play, outdoor learning. And it'd be a, it'd be a shame to just build the building and leave an, sort of an unfinished or just a grassed area in the back. I think there's so much opportunity for play fields, uh, new playground, um, active play areas, whether that's with trees, stumps, rocks, uh, whatever it might be. I think that's the, that's, that's the real opportunity to add on to this project because if you don't do it now, it probably won't happen um, maybe even ever. Number one was a new facility that met kind of the learning, the learning 
guidelines of today that was modern, that was clean, that was a, a safe environment, but also functioned to replace everything that was existing in the fort and then freed up the space in the fort, but uh, utilized what we currently have existing for services um, within the complex. So for selecting the architect, there was uh, an RFP put out with the basic guidelines of what the school was looking for. That was spearheaded by, by Frank with the information from Adam and uh, senior leadership team. And from there, the architect provided proposals and the decision was made based on the experience of the architect. Construction management was interviewed through RFPs were sent out to five parties. All five agreed to participate, provided their best proposals forward. Met with the design team of myself, Tim, Frank, um, and uh, we, we reviewed each proposal individually. Came up with a grading system prior to interviews of the five key points that we wanted to, to grade them on. So that there was a level playing field for discussion and it was narrowed down to two. And then from there, the decision was made to proceed with victory based primarily on those five key objectives, but experience, but also for myself, one of the ones that, that uh, Peter and his father are hands-on, which on a job this size, we wanted a staff that was hands-on to the project from start to finish and not just a firm that was awarded a project and then staff was subbed in to complete the work. We, as far as keeping the job on budget, the system that we put in place here was a fixed price contract, which will be completed prior to the start of construction with a set price management fee. Uh, that will ensure that we are not hit with extras as, as we come along. Um, the other, other, other item is just thorough planning of the drawings and review, which myself and Tim and the design team have been doing progressively as we move along. I think overall, the, 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 the campus improvement is, it can only be a positive. Uh, construction costs will be rising every year as they consistently had through COVID and if the project isn't, isn't started this year, it's going to cost more next year. Every, every year following it will cost more. So I think that this is the year to, to start it and I think we have the team in place to do it and the process in place and the funds. As you heard, we are going to be doing an elementary school addition, which is what we're calling our fort replacement. And for that project, we want to raise $3 million over the next 18 months or so with some current gifts as well as some pledges. But we're also going to be moving into seeking some pledges, some long-term support for a middle school, that project we see coming down the road. So we are going to be raising $3 million or approximately a third of a goal of $10.6 million. And from a personal experience, having a new elementary school is going to be amazing for the school. So I'm excited to lead this project along with a number of volunteers and our head of school, Adam Olders. No matter who you are, what we all want for our school is to be a place where our kids and families thrive. No one doubts that our world is changing. This community is changing. We're the fastest growing municipality in Greater Vancouver. The population here is expected to double by 2040. More and more people are moving here who want the best for their children and grandchildren. At the same time, the need for an alternative Christian independent school that provides outstanding programs and a high quality education in Langley has never been greater. We need a school in this community where the partnership and shared sense of ownership and biblical values between parents and staff is strong where the impact on community is greater than our size. We're a school where kids are grounded and rooted in ways of thinking and being that are aligned with who God created them to truly be. We know that a sense of purpose, belonging, connection to community, and growing together is what makes for healthy families. Equipping our kids with the science, math, trades, technology, art, design, literacy and leadership skills that will set them up to be adaptable, lifelong learners in a globalized workplace is what they need to courageously and faithfully march into an uncertain future. So supporting a school where shared traditional faith-based values are championed and spaces created to freely express them is more important than ever to the future of all of our communities and public institutions. As we've grown to accommodate more families, the fort was a great short-term solution but we've surpassed its intended lifespan. Our lease is costing us $150,000 per year and maintenance costs are mounting. We're now on borrowed time and a long-term solution is needed. We can't deliver on what we've been entrusted to do without the facilities to support it. In recent years, we have made substantive efforts toward executing on our strategic plan. We've raised our staff compensation to market value. 
and we've worked hard to recruit and retain very talented and passionate Christian educators to serve our families. We've invested in capital planning and upgrades on all campuses, a new library commons, renovated drama space, science classrooms, computing and robotics labs, graphic design, trades and technology spaces, and investments in new literacy and math resources. Our impact and innovation fund, supported by generous donors, has helped make a lot of this possible. Facilities are important because they shape the kind of teaching we do. Innovative, impactful, foundational, collaborative. Educational spaces inspire us, unite us, and bring us together. They are our home away from home. They're where our kids play, learn, and grow up. They foster the relationships that make us who we are, uniquely created, a people who find our primary identity in our shared faith. Investing in them is perhaps the most important and transformative investment any of us will ever make.